So yesterday we did the front sheet of this standard worksheet, standard form worksheet. And yesterday we talked about this right here is standard form. AX, and the A is just any number, right? AX plus BY, and the B is any number, equals C. Okay, that's standard form, where A, B, and C are just simply numbers. What's the rule that A that we learned yesterday that A cannot be? A can't be negative. Today we're going to learn the second rule about A, which is that it cannot be a fraction. So we're kind of stacking on top of what we already know about yesterday. But we still always want to refer to standard form as AX plus BY equals C. So on the back of your paper, I would write this at the top of the back side, please, if you haven't done it already. Go ahead and write this AX plus BY equals C at the top of your paper there on the back. All right. <clears throat> so day two, we're just going to look at fractions. And um, again, I already told you the second rule that we didn't talk about yesterday is that A value can't be a fraction and it can't be a negative. So the ones that we're going to work with today, some of them are going to be fractions and we have to learn how to undo that, which it's not hard at all, but we just want to go over it. So let's just recap. You guys already should have this. AX plus BY equals C. And remember the X and the Y stay generic X and Y. In every, every linear equation, you're always going to have a generic X and Y that stand for every single XY coordinate that lies on that line, and there's a bazillion of them, okay? So our goal is to get it in AX plus BY equals C. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to move that one-fourth X over. And we do it the same way we would have done it if it's a whole number, okay? We add one-fourth X to both sides. So we add one-fourth X to both sides. Okay, now remember that your, I'm going to do it in red here, your equal sign is the scale's middle, right? This is the middle point of your scale, that equal sign. And whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other as far as adding and subtracting things, multiplying and dividing. So when you go to rewrite your equation now, the one-fourth X is now on the left with the Y that was already over there. So now we have one-fourth X, and because we added it to both sides, it's positive. And then the Y, the positive Y that was already over there, equals, and then the one-fourth X is now gone, and the plus five is what's left behind. Now, we've got the X over there where we want it. However, the X right now is a fraction. And the X can't be a fraction. So what we do is we multiply everything by the denominator of the fraction. Okay, and I'll show you what that does. So I'm going to put a 4 up here. Really it's 4 over 1, but you don't have to put that 4 over 1. What's going to happen is the 4 on the top and the 4 on the bottom of the X are going to cancel each other out, which is what you wanted. That's how you get rid of a fraction. And what's left behind is just 1x, or you can just write x. It doesn't matter. But what's left behind is the top of the fraction. In this case, that's a 1. Now, what's the rule in math? Can I just multiply the x value by 4 and stay good? What else do I need to do? I need to multiply the y by 4 and also the 5 by 4, because the rule in math is whatever I do to 1, I have to do it to all 3 in order to keep it fair. So that means when I multiply 4 by y, I get positive 4y. And when I multiply the 5 by 4, I get 20. And you don't actually have to write that 1 out front, because every variable actually has a 1 out front. So this is the simplified, cleaned up version. Now check yourself. Always check yourself, right? Your goal is standard form. Is your X and your Y over on the left with a whole number over on the right? Yes. Is my X positive and is my X a whole number? As long as you answer yes to those, you're good. Okay? All right. Let's look at number three. And I'm... I want to do, yeah, let's look at number three. All right. 
So same thing. First things first is we're going to move that 5 6 x over. Okay, so it's a positive right now. So I'm going to minus 5 6 x on this side. And I'm going to minus 5 6 x on this side. And when I do that, these two cancel out. And looking at your equal sign, right, that's your balance. Now on the left side, I have negative 5, 6, X plus 1, Y, which you can just leave it as a Y, equals, and that positive 6 is what's left over there. Okay? Now, I can already tell, right, I've got a fraction and I have a negative. You can get rid of them both in one step, or you can do it in two steps, whatever makes most sense to you. But... If I want to get rid of the fraction, I multiply by the what? Denominator. If I want to get rid of the negative at the same time, would it be a positive 6 or a negative 6 that I multiply by? That's doing it all in one step. If, if, if you would rather multiply everything by a 6 first, then come back and multiply or divide a negative throughout it, you're still going to get the same answer. But when I do that with the negative 6, I have to remember it goes to everything. And so when I multiply the negative 6, or the, I'm going to leave the negative sign out of this for a second. When I multiply the 6 by the fraction, my 6 and my 6 cancel out, leaving behind the negative and the negative 5, which goes positive, right? Negative times a negative 5 goes positive. Then when I take a negative 6 times y, I get negative 6y. And when I take a negative 6 times 6 on the other side, I get negative 36. And that's proper standard form. Okay, everybody got it? 5x minus 6y equals negative 36. Any questions on that? All right. Um... Eek. I hate when it does that. There we go. Pretty much the exact same thing here. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we are going to minus 2 thirds x from both sides. That gets rid of this. And now on the left hand side, you have negative 2 thirds x plus the y that was already over there equals. And the only thing you have left on the right side of the equal sign now is a 3. And again, right, Jalen, what am I going to multiply to get rid of the fraction? 3. And uh, Montana, positive 3 or negative 3? Okay, if I do a positive 3, let's, oh, let's run it out and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to do a positive 3. The 3 and the 3 cancel each other out leaving behind negative 2x, 3 times y is plus 3y, and 3 times 3 is 9. And that's fine, that works, but now what else also has to happen? Yeah, you still got to get rid of that negative. So if you do it in two steps, which is fine, now you still have to, and you can divide by a negative 1, multiply by a negative 1, it doesn't matter which way you think about it, but it still changes all the, vari or all the values, the signs go the opposite. So if you had multiplied at the beginning up here, if you had done a negative 3, you would have gotten positive 2x, negative 3y, and negative 9. So you would have gotten the same answer whether or not you did it in one step or two. Okay? But here is proper standard form. All right, so let's look at number 7. This one looks a little bit different. So because there's parentheses there, um... Uh, 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 yeah, get your head up, please. Yeah, sorry. My brain just froze on me. What's the first step here? Right, I got to get rid of my parentheses. So I have to distribute. So when I distribute, over here, nothing changed, right? I didn't do anything to the left side. On the right side, 2 fifths times x just simply is 2 fifths x. That's not any big deal. What is a big deal is figuring out how to multiply 2 fifths times 
this 5 out here. First of all, you're multiplying a positive times a negative. So you know your sign is going to be negative. That doesn't need to figure into your calculation here. If you want to, come out here to the side and do 2 fifths times 5 over 1. Okay, because it's 2 fifths times 5 over 1. When I do that, I get 10 over 5, which reduces to 2. So I can come back here and I can put a 2 here. Because 2 fifths times 5, or negative 5, is negative 2. Now, okay, now I've got a couple of things I want to move. Who haven't I talked to yet? Bryce, what's one of the things I need to move? There's two, and it doesn't matter the order. Okay, so what would I do to move that? Okay, I'm going to add two, and I'm going to add two. And when I do that, I get y equals 2 fifths x minus 2 and positive 2 is plus 0. And that's okay. Just leave it a plus 0. That doesn't hurt anything. Okay, now what? Yeah, I'm going to minus 2 fifths x to both sides. So I'm going to do a negative 2 fifths x here and a negative 2 fifths x on the left. And when I do that, I'm going to write it out over here, I get negative 2 fifths x plus y. Those are the two things that are over on the left-hand side of the equal sign now. On the right-hand side of the equal sign, it's just equal 0, and that's okay. Just leave it equal 0. It doesn't hurt anything. Now, uh, Atticus, what would I do next? No, I need to get rid of my fraction. Oh, uh, multiply by negative 5. Good, multiply by negative 5. Multiply by a 5 because that's the denominator. Multiply by a negative because I need a negative and a negative to go positive. So when I do that, my 5 and my 5 cancel out. My negative and my negative go positive, so I'm left with 2x. Okay, and then I need to remember that that negative 5 has to go to both. So when I take negative 5 times positive yx, or positive y, I get negative 5y. And when I take negative 5 times 0, it stays 0. Is that proper standard form? Am I good? Does it matter that there's a 0 on the right? Gabby, what do you think? Does it matter? Am I good? Can I have a 0 over there? Is there any rule about c being 0? Nope, we're good. My A is positive, my A is not a fraction, my X and my Y are together on the left. It doesn't matter what number is over on the right, it can be a zero, it can be four million. I would hate to have to graph that, but we're good. All right, number nine says write in standard form, and we're given a point and a slope. So to start with an equation, we can never start in standard form. You have to start in y equals mx plus b. And so for that, I need an m and I need a b. What do I have? Montana, what do I have? I have, which goes with the what, the m or the b? All right, I have a one-fourth. Do I have a b? But do I have enough information to find a b? Yeah, so keeping in mind y equals mx plus b, I have, let's do this in color here, I have an m, which is my slope, right here. And then I also have an x and a y that would be, that we could plug in right there. So let's plug in all of our values that we know. y equals negative 3, because that's the y value in my point. m is 1 fourth. x is negative 4 plus b. Now, when I take 1 fourth times negative 4, okay, remember you can actually write negative 4 as negative 4 over 1, right? Negative 3 equals, because I'm not doing anything over there yet. First of all, positive 1 fourth and negative 1 fourth is going to result in what? A negative, right? A positive times a negative is going to be a negative. And my 4s are going to cross cancel to 1 and 1. So I get negative 1b. Do I have my b? No, I've got a negative b. I need a positive b. So what do I need to do? 
Divide by a negative 1, so b equals what? 3. Now I can come back up here and I can fill in that b equals 3. Now, can I go into standard form yet? Do I have enough information to go right into standard form with my m and my b? No, I can go into what? I can go into y equals mx plus b and then do a little moving to get it in standard. So I can write y equals, and my m right here, my y equals 1 fourth x, and now what would I put for plus b? Plus 3, because now I found my b, and now it's just like the ones above. I need to subtract 1 fourth x from both sides. And when I do that, that gives me negative 1 fourth x plus y equals 3, because now that's gone off the right. And then Bryce, what would I multiply this whole thing by? Yeah, negative 4. My 4 is going to cancel out my 4s, and my negative is going to cancel out my negative, so I'm left with a positive 1x, or I can just put x. Negative 4 times y is negative 4y, and negative 4 times 3 equals negative 12. So I've distributed that negative 4 to all three terms inside my parentheses. And that's standard form. And this one is just like the back side. This one right here, this is kind of the worst of the worst. It's like a puzzle. I need to write it in y equals mx plus b. I need an m and I need a b. Do I have either? But do I have enough to find it? Yes. I can find my m by using m equals. And keep in mind, you've got an x1 and a y1, an x2 and a y2. So I'm going to plug into my slope formula. So my y2, I mean my y2 is negative 5, so it's negative 5 minus a minus 1, because it's y2 minus y1, over x2 minus x1. Well, a negative and a negative goes plus. So negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. And negative 5 minus 0 is negative 5, so how could I reduce that down to make it clean. What's a negative and a negative equal? Positive 4 fifths. All right, that's my m, so I'm going to put that right here. That's part of my puzzle. Now I need a b, so what point am I going to choose here to plug into my y equals mx plus b? Does it matter? All right, so I'm going to pick this point right here, and I'm going to plug that into y equals mx plus b. So the y value is negative 5, whoops, Negative 5, y equals m, which is 4 fifths, my x, which is negative 5, plus b. And really it's negative 5 over 1, so that you can multiply fractions here. It makes it easier. All right, remember what I said about cross-reducing? That reduces to a 1, that reduces to a 1. So I'm left with negative... 4 plus b. Okay, now how do I get b by itself? Add 4, add 4, and b equals negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So now I know that my b is negative 1, and I just realized I made an error up above and nobody caught it. I just realized I did it. All right, we'll finish this one. So now I have my m right here. I have my b. So I can write it in y equals mx plus b, or minus b. That's just part of it. I still need to get to standard form. So I'm going to subtract 4 fifths x and subtract 4 fifths x. Those go away, and I'm left with negative 4 fifths x plus y equals negative 1. And Jalen, what's my last step here?
I'm not in standard form because my x is a fraction and it's a negative. What do I need to do to make it not a fraction and not a negative? Positive 5 or negative 5? Okay, if I do positive 5, that's going to leave me a negative 4, and I'm still going to have to run a negative 1 through there. So let's do a negative 5 because that will leave me positive 4x, right? The 5's cancel out, the negatives cancel out, leaving me 4x. And then negative 5 times y is negative 5y. And then negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5, and that is standard form right there. Now, does anybody see what I did up here? I did it right here. This was my error. I multiplied these guys right here, and that worked out fine. And it left me with negative 1. But it wasn't negative 1 times b. It was negative 1 plus b. So instead of dividing by negative 1, I would have added a 1 and added a 1, which would have given me b equals negative 2. So that was my fault. I accidentally forgot this plus sign when I was moving down. Don't worry about changing it on your paper. I just wanted to show you that that was actually an error there. So, All right, take the rest of the hour. Work on the even side. And if you get done, I've got a key here to check it with. And if you have any questions, obviously holler at me. And if you're at home, you have any questions, shoot me an email. Okay?